Hello and welcome to the Historian's Hut. Today we will poorly draw the Battle of Dyrrhachion. Let's start by drawing the lay of the land. Dyrrhachion was on a peninsula off the coast of modern day Albania. Dyrrhachion is thought to have been in modern day Dress, Albania. The peninsula was made up of a lagoon. And feeding into the lagoon was a large marsh. Let's go ahead and paint the Adriatic Sea blue. And go ahead and paint the lagoon blue. And maybe for the marsh we'll do that green. Off to the right of the peninsula was a large mountainous region, which we will just illustrate with some squiggly lines. The city and fortress of Dyrrhachion was located on the edge of the peninsula, right around here, with the lagoon and the marsh on one side and the sea on the other. The aggressor in this siege and battle was the Norman noble Robert Giscard. Robert Giscard was the Duke of Apulia and had expanded his way into Sicily and Naples and expanded his influence all the way up to Lombardy. He had an on and off again relationship with the Pope. Sometimes he defended him, sometimes he attacked him. You never knew. Robert was sieging this city because a new emperor had come to power in Constantinople. The emperor's name was Alexios Komnenos, who took power in 1081 CE. So claiming that he was invading the empire to reinstate this emperor Michael VII, he launched an invasion with around 30,000 troops, landed in Albania, and marched his way down to this peninsula and parked his army off to the side of Dyrrhachion, beside the lagoon in the marsh, right about here. The siege did not go very well at all. He couldn't break into the city despite making siege engines and siege towers. He even shot the leader of the city in the head, but the man survived and the siege continued. Robert's men started to suffer malnutrition and famine and disease. Morale was getting low and only Robert believed in the siege. The siege went on so long that Emperor Alexios arrived with around 20,000 troops. Alexios parked his men with the lagoon in front of him, the mountains to his right, and the sea to his left. With Robert in sight, Alexios called together his war council and came up with a plan. He envisioned a three-prong attack. For the first prong, he wanted a division of his men to go around through the marsh and attack. Like that. For the second prong, Alexios was just going to move his own men forward. In the last prong, Alexios wanted the garrison of Dyrrhachion to attack. Unfortunately for Alexios, Robert Giscard thwarted all of his plans by, during the night, moving across the peninsula to the other side. In this new position, Alexios gave up his idea of a three-pronged assault. Robert Giscard lined his men up in three columns. Alexios lined his men up in three columns as well. Out in front was Alexios's elite Varangian guard. Robert started the battle by launching some cavalry at Alexios's men. The purpose of the cavalry was to lure Alexios's men out of position and leave them vulnerable. Fortunately for Alexios, however, he had a whole lot of archers that fired on the cavalry and caused them to break. Next, Robert's right wing launched a charge against the middle and left wing of Alexios' troops. The Varangian Guard, however, caught the Normans and allowed Alexios' left wing to cut around and flank them, causing the Norman line to break and retreat to the sea. At this point, Alexios' men suffered from a lack in discipline. Alexios' left wing pursued the Normans to the sea, 
and the Varangians, thirsty for blood, joined in the chase. Robert Giscard, however, detached some infantry from his main body, and he had them flank Alexios' men. The Varangians and Alexios' left wing both were broken because of this. The Normans that were driven to the sea returned to the battle. And now that the Varangians were gone, Robert called out his cavalry again and had them attack Alexios' main line. When that worked really well, he had his other cavalry come around and flank Alexios' men. Soon Alexios found that he was being enveloped by the Normans. Which caused him to flee the battlefield. Though in the account he gave to his daughter, he was chased by horsemen in a dramatic scene the whole way out. With that, Alexios' army fled from the field and the Normans were victorious. And so ended the Battle of Dyrrhachion in 1081 CE. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next poorly drawn history. Ah!